Welcome back to the portfolio, everyone. And today we're going over the top six stocks you can buy right now for under $30. All six of these companies operate within different sectors of the market, provide different products and services to consumers, and all have some nice future upside potential moving forward. So you can always take a look at all these stocks right now for under $30. And like I said, we're going to break down each individual company, take a look at what they actually do to generate revenue, and just take a quick look at their financial statements to determine if they are doing what we expect them to do, which is growing revenue, growing income, and having a nice strong balance sheet. So before we do that, everyone, I'm the Gen Z investor, and every single day on this channel, I post videos about the stock market, different stocks you can buy for your portfolio, overall stock market news and performance, and any other big stock market news and headlines. So please like and subscribe. We're going to get right into the video. So my current financial freedom portfolio is at $48,359. Overall portfolio is still down around 7%, but once again, I'm a dividend growth investor. I'm holding for the long term, so those price fluctuations do not bug me too much. I'm sure the price will come back over the long term. I'm going to continue to collect my dividends, continue, continue to purchase some nice dividend paying stocks, and watch my financial freedom portfolio grow over the long term. So I'm going to jump straight into the first stock, which is ticker symbol ZNGA. Zynga currently trading at $9.81 a share. On the one-year chart, they have seen an insane run-up of around 55%. On the 52-week range chart, they are trading towards the high side, but are not directly at the 52-week high. And a mark cap on this company at $10.45 billion. So this is one of those companies that operates and distributes mobile apps. So they sell different games on Apple and Google devices. So what they do is essentially they create and develop different applications and games for people to play on their phones and on Facebook and Snapchat and stuff like that. And not only do they sell those games, but they also sell advertisements that show and play on those games. So that's so this company generates money. I'm sure you've heard of them, and I'm sure you've played some of their famous games out there right now. If we take a look, this company has done a beautiful job of growing revenue year over year. Revenue has doubled over the past five years, and a nice solid uptrend year over year with total revenue. And this company has done exactly what you expect from a nice growth company. In the initial stages, they were losing money each and every year, but they have actually become profitable and are making net income that is growing year over year. The next thing, of course, with a balance sheet, during there's a lot of uncertainty right now with how the world is performing. And although this is the type of company that has seen some beautiful growth during this time, we got to make sure their balance sheet has enough assets to cover all their short-term liabilities in order to continue to operate the business within the next 12 months because there is still a lot of uncertainty with how the economy is going to perform moving forward within the short term. Within the next 6 to 12 months, they're still up in the air with what we're expecting to see. So if you take a look here on the balance sheet, they have $1.5 billion in total current assets. Meanwhile, their total current liabilities is around 800 million. So you have that current ratio up around 1.8 right now, which is beautiful. They're very close to two. A beautiful current ratio for these companies is around 1.5 and higher. So they have that right now. So this may be a strong look in your portfolio if you want to diverse into this type of company. Stock number two on our list is a dividend investor's favorite company, ticker symbol T, which is AT&T, currently trading at $30.16 a share. On the one-year chart, they are down 7.7%, but of course, we all know what AT&T does, the large telecommunication company, with a market cap around $215 billion. 52-week range, they are trading towards the low side, which may make this a nice buying opportunity. And of course, you can see they have not returned to pre-pandemic levels where they were trading close to $40 a share. So this may make a nice buying opportunity for people who like some nice dividend income within their portfolios. at and current yield is around 7% at 6.88. Payout ratio, which is somewhat sustainable, at around 65%, with a slow but consistent five-year dividend growth rate at around 2%. So they are growing your dividend at the rate of inflation. So at least you aren't losing money to inflation each and every year. And they have a beautiful dividend growth history at around 36 years. So they are a dividend aristocrat and they will continue to pay that dividend year over year. The next stock on our list, of course, operates within a different sector and now is Wendy's. Ticker symbol WEN, trading at $23.35 per share. Five-year growth has been amazing on this company at around 122% over five years. If we take a look at the one-year chart, they still are up 19%. They saw a huge decline in the month of March, like most of the, most companies did, but have fully recovered and are continuing to grow very nicely. Mark kept around $5 billion, and this company is trading towards its 52-week high, but once again, if you believe in this company, and now that the economy and everyone's a lot around the United States and Canada are actually opening up their businesses and people are actually leaving their houses once again, Wendy's may be a nice company that will benefit once people believe you know, they want to get out of their houses, go spend money, go purchase fast food out and about. Wendy's might be a company that has seen a nice surge in revenue coming forward. With regard to that dividend that they do pay is a 1.7% yield right now, which is a somewhat on the low side. 
a 70% payout ratio, which is not too worrying just yet. I usually like to cap my dividend stocks at a payout ratio around 75%, so they do fall within that criteria. They have a beautiful five-year dividend growth average at around 15% per year, and they've been growing that dividend for around 10 years. So decent dividend history, nice dividend growth rate. Although you're getting a starting yield, that dividend has been growing very nicely, and there should be a little bit of room to continue paying that dividend with a 70% payout ratio right now. Next stock on our list is a little bit of a different type of company. We have Penn National Gaming, ticker symbol P-E-N-N, -N, currently around $35 a share. So this one is a little bit above 30, but once again, it is within that $30 range. Up on the five-year chart, 87%. If we take a look at the one-year chart, it is up around 100%. They saw a huge crash in the month of March, but have fully recovered back to those pre-pandemic levels. And of course, they have a market cap just shy of $5 billion. So this is a small to cap company. But if we take a look at what they actually do, if you don't know, they own and manage gaming and racing properties and operate video game test, um, test terminals with a focus on slot machine entertainment. So in reality, this is essentially a gambling type company. Of course, it's called Penn National Gaming. So they operate different sectors in order in the casino and gaming niche. So if we take a look at what they've been doing and why this company may be a nice addition to your portfolio is because they have been growing nicely year over year. So overall, total revenues have been growing each and every year, which is exactly what you want to see from these types of companies. $2.8 billion in 2015, all the way up to $5.1 billion in the past 12 months. And this company was generating a profit year over year. You can see they were profitable over the last five years. But in the past 12 months, they had some unexpected expenses, and they actually did post their first net income over the past five years. And it was a significant around around $600 million. But I do believe they will continue to operate and continue to go back to a profitable standing and make money long into the future. The next stock on our list has been in an industry that has been hit extremely hard, which of course is the financial sector. And of course, Bank of America Corporation currently trading at $24 a share. One year chart, they are down close to 17%, nowhere near pre-pandemic levels, which may make this a nice buying opportunity. 52 week range on the low side and market cap around $211 billion. So if you are low in the financial sector and you choose and you believe in the financial sector long term, Bank of America might be the one you want to pick up right now. It is the second largest bank in the US by market cap. If we take a look at that dividend, nice 3% yields right now, 46% payout ratio, which is very sustainable, and a five year dividend growth at around 40%. That number is extremely high, and that is because they have only been paying that dividend and growing that dividend for four years. So that number is extremely inflated. That number will not be sustained growing forward. If and when they do raise their dividend next, it will be a lot less than that 40%. But that is what the current rate is right now. But do not expect that moving forward. I'm putting that out there right now. Next stock on our list is a little bit of a different one. That's why I put this stock last. It's a little bit of an odd play. Ticker symbol VIAC, Viocom CBS, currently trading at $24.86. So on the one-year chart, this stock has been hammered. It is down 51%. On the five-year chart, this stock is down to 54%, which is absolutely incredible. And it's on the 10-year chart, it is up 78%. But of course, in the past five years, all of those gains have been wiped away. So this is the stock I'm least comfortable with, and it's probably my least favorite on this list. But a lot I've heard a lot of comments about it, and I've actually been asked specifically about this company, which is why I am going to throw it in, because it does fit the criteria for being a stock under $30 that may be a buy right now. On the 52-week range, it is trading on the low side with a market cap around $15 billion. And they do put a 3.92% dividend yield right now on this company. If you actually don't know what they do, the company operates in four segments, TV entertainment, cable networks, film entertainment, and publishing. So of course, all those sectors are actually getting hit right now. So film entertainment, because of what's going on in the world right now, they are not a lot of companies are actually filming different movies, TV shows, so on right now. Because nothing's getting filmed, nothing new is being published. Cable TV is a dying industry right now, and TV entertainment is kind of tough right now with this day and age. So they operate in a bunch of different markets. They own a bunch of different like segments on TV, like CBS Sports Network, a 24 cable program service that provides college sports and related content, a bunch of different networks to generate revenue. But what make this what might make this company actually a buy right now, if you do your own research and determine that you like them, is because of their financials. Their financials are actually not bad. You see here, 2015, 2016, around 12.5, 12.6 billion dollars in revenue. But in the past 12 months, they've generated 27.3. So they've more than doubled their revenue in the past five years. And they've brought in 27.3 billion dollars worth of revenue, which is nothing too shabby. That's actually very nice revenue growth. And with their net income, they're profitable each and every year. Their net income was growing nicely year over year. In the past 12 months, of course, a lot of companies have unexpected 
expenses, one-time expenses to deal with the current economic shutdown. So they are posting a little bit of a lower net income, but not including this past 12 months of a little bit of hardship, the company was growing their net income year over year. So this is a company that actually has not bad financials, even though the share price has been hammered as of late. And if we take a look at their balance sheet, they have total current assets of around $10.4 billion. Meanwhile, total current liability is at around 8.5. So their current ratio is still above one. It's around 1.2, which isn't the greatest that you really want to try to bump that up to at least 1.5, but their current ratio is still above one. So they do have enough assets to deal with their total current liabilities and not have really have to worry within the next 12 months. And overall, they have total assets around 49 billion. Meanwhile, total total assets, total liability, sorry, overall at around 35.2 billion. So once again, their total ratio is above one. They are growing the company and they have enough assets to deal with all their liabilities, which is great to see. And as well, you want total equity to grow year over year. And you can see, although they saw a slight decline here, they completely recovered and total equity is on an upward trend, which is beautiful. So overall, this company has been hammered on their share price appreciation, but the actual financials aren't looking too bad right now. So of course, you have to do your own research with all these companies. I don't make any financial recommendations. I am not a financial advisor, but I want to share with you the top six stocks you could buy right now for under $30. And of course, always do your own research. And if you like any of these stocks, please let me know in the comments. And I appreciate everyone who watches and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.